Hi everyone, welcome to What Is This Weapon? I'm Jonathan and this is an AN94. Well, sort of. It's an MMG AN94. So it's a factory deactivated gun. We acquired this about 10 years ago and at the time we thought that was as good as it was gonna get. Here at the Armouries we collect live firearms. We do not want them um, damaged or destroyed. We collect them live for posterity and for education. This isn't quite it, but we never thought we would ever get another one. Well, it turns out these things are like buses. You wait for years and then three come along at once. Now, as we unexpectedly have three live fire AN94s and uh, I hear this thing has three different firing modes, it would be a shame if we didn't take these to the range. Load. Ready? Shoot your one, five rounds that you target. Carry on. Two, five, two round bursts at your target, carry on. You've just seen all three firing modes of the Nikonov AN94. Let's take a closer look. A rare opportunity, I think you'll agree there, to see three working AN94 for all firing at the same time and in the three different modes. So semi-automatic, the, the famous hyperburst, two round burst and full auto, which includes that same hyperburst at the beginning of every trigger pull. And of course there is a fourth mode which is this, the 6X5 AK-74 bayonet, because this is in fact one of the few, except, well, few parts or accessories shared with that standard issue uh, rifle. So diff different molded polymer handle, slightly different blade profile, but it's standard to both weapons. But on the AN, it fits on the side. So that's your fourth mode effectively. Uh, fairly unusual to have a bayonet mounted on the side of the barrel like that, but it's a conventional bit of cold steel at the end of the day. I mean, I guess your fifth mode is the underbarrel GP25 or GP30 grenade launcher, um, which we haven't got fitted here, but these are strictly accessories. So to support that original Forgotten Weapons video with our uh, dummy, AN94, I wrote a, a fairly lengthy two-part article, which very few people read. Um, and for part two, I definitely don't blame them. That was my attempt to understand the detail of how this thing worked. Um, not only the, the pulley and the cable and the reciprocating barrel and the pusher thingamy and that Ian very ably explained in his video, but the relationship between the trigger mechanism and the sear that fires the gun that allows those three things to happen depending on how you select it. That's, a ba that's basically impossible to show with just a stripped down gun and um, basically impossible to show with text and pictures as I discovered when I read my own article and realized that I couldn't, I was no further forward. <laughs> so in 2017, we did not have World of Guns Gun Disassembly, which is a fantastic app that you can have on your phone as I've now, uh, I've now merged my accounts so that my copy uh, on my phone has this available on it as well and on uh, PC, desktop, whatever you choose to, to have it on, on Steam. Um, and that is 
I mean, it's a game, but it's also uh, an invaluable research tool, especially for anything complicated, anything out of the ordinary like this. And you can, what well, I'm going to attempt to explain some features, but I will be, I will end up talking over footage from World of Guns because it's just the best way to show it. So we can show you the animations. Uh, you can also use the code Jonathan10 to um, get, get the app, obviously, but use the code Jonathan10 to unlock the AN94 for free and you can try that out. Um, make sure I'm not talking nonsense and have a deep dive into it yourself. You can simulate firing in all the different modes. You can slow it right down. You can cut it in half with red highlighted uh, parts. You can go X-ray, three different X-ray modes. Uh, you can uh, do timed or untimed disassembly, reassembly, uh, all, all sorts of different ways you can do it. There are leaderboards. There's, you can gamify it as much as you want or as little as you want, or you can just zoom in and look at the, the nerdy details of how the thing works. So definitely check that out. Now, one question you can answer, I mean, you can easily answer this one, but it's much easier to visualize with World of Guns, is why this thing has the magazine sticking off to the side. It's probably easier just to show you like that. So conventional, of course, AK-74 magazine. One of the very few parts on this gun that is AK-74. We will show you the few parts that this shares with the AK. There aren't many, and they're all really tiny, things like springs. The extractor and spring, for example. Uh, the pistol grip is not actually the same part because it, they'd have to modify, or did, have to modify the mold to give it this angle to interface with the gun. So even this isn't an AK part. The magazine catch, not an AK part, but the spring is. <laughs> the magazine is, in fact, um, the only consistent significant part. The extractor, I suppose, is the, big, is the biggie. But people look at this, they see a curved mag, they think AK. It is not. It is not at all an AK. It is a Nikonov, an AN, uh, Gennady Nikonov's absolute genius piece of design. How applicable it is to the real world, we're going to find out. But So the magazine, normally it would stick straight out the bottom. On this thing, it famously sticks out to the side. Why is that? Well, primarily, to keep it as slim as possible. This is already quite a wide rifle. And if they inserted it through the bottom, we'll, we'll throw up a clip from World of Guns, spin it around, and you'll be able to see the gubbins that is in the way of the magazine, or would be in the way of the magazine, if it was coming in straight. You could make the gun wide enough to accommodate, so it's going to be um, the, the pusher, or the shuttle, or the rammer, whatever you want to call it, component, its cable, um, the, there is stuff, and the spring, and the, the return spring for that. That's essentially what is preventing this. That's what lives in this bit that means that the magazine can't be over this side. Again, so much easier to show you in the app, and you can have a look yourself. So that's one thing. Now, to explain how things normally work, we take it apart. So um, it, I'd be remiss if I didn't take this apart, even though World of Guns does it better. We want to make sure that we are clear. And then the first step is to pop up this lever. This is your main disassembly lever, and it wants to go into the vertical position. It's a little harder at a um, table than a workbench, so forgive me, not as slick as it might be. We use the cocking handle to pop off the top cover, and we can already see how complicated this thing is looking. We make sure we're on automatic. We lift up, out, and there's our firing unit. This is almost like the gun within the gun. And we are probably going to make this tablecloth dirty because this gun has been fired. That's the receiver. We've got this support rod out front, also for mounting our grenade launcher. Our cartridge lifter, we can pop that out if we want to. So this is the intermediate point You can only do 1,800 rounds per minute if you can have two rounds queued up or in a line. So you've got one coming out of the magazine, but there's already one that's been shoved out of the magazine on top of this lifter, which lifts it up, ready to be fed into the breech. You can only get those two rounds if they're two, both ready to go. The other way to do it was to have the magazine sliding back and forth, so it occupies two different positions, depending on the firing cycle. This is for the hyperburst, of course. 
but they discovered that the forearm or you know a bit of foliage or something touching the magazine would stop it from moving and you have a the gun gun stops working so they went with a static magazine sitting further back Ian covers all of this um, really well in his video but there's that component Uh, this receiver we have, so the trickiest bit, well this is your stock folding mechanism but it is also your takedown so we pop that all the way over that plunger and down and our trigger mechanism comes off um, running out of space <laughs> on, the, on the bench here and this is, this is critical, this is the key to, to the operation but we'll come back to that in just a moment. I mean, somewhat critical, as Ian pointed out, is this muzzle device, because that's creating uh, sufficient back pressure for this thing to work reliably, at least. So there's that. Two swirling chambers of, of expanded gases. There's a specific bit of the patent for this. This was patented in 1997. Let me throw that up for you as well. Um, so that would be quite critical. I think you need, you, you're going to need this or a suppressor. Someone did modify or fit a suppressor to this 2013-14. Um, along, by the way, with a Picatinny rail top cover. So that, that was a kind of um, something done by some officers at a training ground on their own initiative. Not official, uh, but we're getting, we're getting to the later history of the AN later on. The firing unit itself, the infamous pulley and wheel. We need to pop the... Well, ah, getting ahead of myself. We need to fire off the hammer, the linear hammer, so that's what hits the back of the firing pin, fires the, the gun, it's just uh, flown forward. We can then push forward on the buffer assembly, well the hammer spring and buffer assembly, that comes out the back. That's the firing unit with the infamous pulley and wheel system, which is a bit more robust than people give it credit for I think. Our linear hammer will then pop out the back, that's the hammer. We then need to get rid of the spring pressure to remove the wheel and then release that forwards and then lift up the sear to remove oh, and the cable loves to snag on things. So that's the pusher, rammer, whatever you want to call it. It acts like a sort of surrogate bolt, secondary bolt to get that second cartridge onto the lifter with its own spring. Extremely complicated, as you can see. Then we have, and we're back to convention, we have a miniature or smaller AK type, similar anyway, gas piston, gas piston. Intact now, not like our DIAC one. Um, bolt carrier and bolt, and the bolt itself is also intact, which is also nice and wouldn't have the lovely shooting footage that we've given you without those features, needless to say. Oh, that is it. That's as much as a user would ever want to do. Where Ian kind of had to leave it because, again, no world of guns. <laughs> the risk of repeating that is he demonstrated. So we have the trigger mechanism here, trigger component pushes down on this component. This is the heart of the AN94 system, this piece of grey steel here. That's getting pushed down by the trigger and it rotates. That pulls down on the sear. So like a conventional firearm with some sort of hammer and some sort of sear going into a notch so that when the trigger is pulled it pops out, hammer flies forward, or in this case a linear hammer flies forward, hits the firing pin, hits the cartridge, fires the gun. Well this thing has a really weirdly shaped sear component in two parts effectively. So you've got this shelf, absolutely critical, you can see that in a moment, animated, and the sear is a roller. So to disconnect it has to not only pop up off the back of this shelf, but it also pops in and out so that it's engaging the correct surface on this shelf. If you're already getting confused, don't worry because you're going to be seeing on screen uh, something that makes sense. Uh, we can also we can show you the selector on here. Let's show you that first. So pushing down and sliding forward and in very simple terms where this ledge is positioned dictates where that sear disconnects from the trigger mechanism. So all the way to the rear is 
well, all the way forwards, let's start there, all the way forwards is semi-automatic. So, forwards. The seer starts off back here, that little roller. Whole mechanism recalls within the receiver, such as you can see in our nice high-speed footage. Roller pops up, trigger's disconnected, doesn't do anything. Gun fires its shot, comes back into, into battery. On two round burst, in the middle position, that whole, that ledge moves backwards, meaning there's more of it available for the seer to run along before it pops up. That gives you your two round burst, and we can show you that in uh, an animation of the two round burst cycle, firing cycle. And what you'll see there is that roller starts off about here. Don't listen to me, look at the animation. Starts off sort of in the middle-ish of the ledge, runs to the rear as the whole thing, remember, gun inside a gun, recoiling inside the receiver, comes up. By the time it's popped off the back and made the trigger go dead, it's already fired two shots because this hammer gets locked into the bolt carrier. Again, you'll see that much better on the animation. So on that second hyperburst shot, it slams forward and it's like a slam fire. So the first shot, it flies forward and fires. Second shot, it, it stays put because the trigger, the C is held down thanks to the magic ledge. And the whole thing slams forward and fires the second shot and it comes back and it disconnects just like it does in semi-automatic. And then on auto, the only difference is, so all the way to the rear, puts that sear roller directly under this bit, which is wider. See that very clearly, hopefully, on the uh, animation. So that it does the two round burst thing, pops off the back, but instead of stopping, it keeps going with the sear held down by that extra wide bit. So there's an extra wide bit at the front of, the la of, of this uh, trigger plate. And as long as you keep the trigger held down, that's keeping that same nubbin pulled down and the bolt is free to cycle. All very complicated, but hopefully with those animations, it will become clear. If it doesn't, use the code, check it out for yourself. So there we are, massively complicated. Um, hopefully you're a bit further forward in understanding how it works, uh, probably thanks to World of Guns more than, more than me and the footage that we've given you there, including in high speed. So you can see that hyperburst in action. That's the real key here. But then there's also the full auto mode. That has a specific function as well. So that's the how. Join us next time for more on the AN94 for really the why of it. So why did uh, Russia think that this was the way forward? And how effective is it compared to the AK-74? You'll have seen this fired on other channels assessments of its effectiveness, in particular in burst mode. I don't think you will have seen it fired against the thing that it was supposed to replace, the AK-74. But thanks to this collection, we have examples of both and we can fire them both for you next time. So thanks again to World of Guns for pretty much making this episode possible um, as far as explaining how this thing works. Definitely check that out with the code that we've given you. Other than that, um, you know, I, by now, I hope that we have three museums that you can visit here in the UK. Uh, but, you know, our, in, our reach is international. We have this series. Um, you can check out our social media channels. Like and subscribe here, please. We, I, I'm very guilty of forgetting to ask you to do that, but we really appreciate if you if you will. And the other thing you can do for us is to donate. We do have a link on the website where you can um, send us a bit of support to help uh, help keep the lights on help keep us doing the occasional firing video and uh, support the, uh, the main episodes that we do here on this channel and everything else that the museum does. Uh, but we will see you here again next week.